so hey everybody happy wednesday uh welcome to sac state uniques i think this is the 25th virtual show and um i'm loving it uh <laughs> so courtesy of miss rona i don't know events as we knew it completely changed we had to stop pivot and re um uh, reevaluate how we were going to do everything um you know because nothing's going to stop us so we're coming at you live with another virtual right. showcase brought to you and supported by the staff and volunteers of sac state unique program so welcome everybody um for more info on for future shows what's next for unique as well as how to get involved go ahead and check out our schedule and more at sacstateunique.com or follow us here or follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at Sac State Unique. Um, a little note of gratitude. I want to thank everyone involved here and behind the scenes who are working hard just to like get these events to you. You know, um, we've had a little bit of everything, and today we get to to learn how to make a little bit of holiday food, a little bit of autumn food. I know we were talking about you know autumn versus Christmas. You know, it's a it's a big fight. It's a really it's a it's a big struggle. But um, we're gonna keep a little bit of autumn in here. Um, but thank you, thank you to all the volunteers that are sharing this. Thank you to um, all the staff that is even making this happen. Thank you to our guests today. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. Um, and uh, thank you to everyone that's that's viewing right now. We got uh, we got 25 people here. That's crazy. <laughs> that's 25 people. Like that feels like like magic right there. I mean, that feels I mean, that's special. compared compared to a live show. That's about like 75 people in a live show. Like. <laughs> So thank you guys for, for enjoying this with us. Um, so right now, we got Diva Di Cucina. Um, that translates to Goddess of the Kitchen as, we, uh, as we've been over. <laughs> so um, Rebecca has been um, part of a family um, from Italy and, and brought a lot of that, um, the culture of food and, and raised her up right, you know. Um, so since 2011, she took all the things she's learned from her family and all the things she's learned by herself and just combine that into much, like so much published content on her website. Uh, this is recipes, pictures, food facts, um, her own little like mini adventures in the kitchen, you know, and so she posts all this stuff through her website and she showcases it on Instagram. So um, again, this is quick, easy family recipes. It's not a lot of money. It's not a lot of extravagant stuff. It is just um, quick, delicious, um, sensible things. Um, everything from adult beverages, meals, desserts, um, to everything else. So you can check that out at dvdcucina.com and on Instagram, at DVD Cucina. So without further ado, guys, please, please welcome Rebecca or DVD Cucina. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Noah. Thank you for Unique Programs for having me back. Um, it is awesome to be here today. And this just feels so fitting that we're cooking a fall feast when, you know, with the weather's finally cooling down. We've got some rain here in Sacramento. So um, so first of all, I do want to start with um, this dish is basically what we're going to be starting off with today is making a pork chop that has apple pie filling on top and then stuffing and then we're going to bake that and then we're doing a pumpkin pie mousse. Um, but I think another thing to keep in mind is like what kind of side dishes to cook with it. So um, these are some of my favorite side dishes. If you tuned into my last um, cooking demonstration of the summer, you may have caught on that I am all about cooking seasonal produce and seasonal food. So um, one of my favorite seasonal vegetables in the fall, which I know they're not for everybody, but are Brussels sprouts. So I am gonna go ahead and be cooking some Brussels sprouts for myself to enjoy with my pork chop when it's done. I know it's not part of the cooking demo, but I did wanna at least just kind of give you some tips on cooking some Brussels sprouts. So um, Brussels sprouts are awesome. They are full of so many vitamins and they're really, really good if you know how to cook them right. So I think one of the tricks, tricks I found cooking Brussels sprouts is I love to bake them. Um, and one of the tips I learned is to cut them, cook them with the cut side down. So you'll see these, I basically cut these, wash these, 
pulled off a couple of outer leaves, cut them in half, just toss them with some olive oil, some salt and pepper, and I'm just gonna be baking those. And that's the trick to getting a really good caramelized flavor on them. I find is to cook the, bake, the cut side down and then that'll give a really nice crispiness and really cooks those insides um, more evenly. So I'm gonna put these in the oven typically for at 400 degrees for like 30 to 40 minutes. It just depends on how big they are. So that is one thing I'm cooking with my pork chops today. And then the other thing I'm going to be cooking up, which is one of my favorite seasonal squashes, is acorn squash. So um, acorn squash are delicious. And so what I've done with these is I cut it in half. I removed all the seeds and the kind of stringy stuff in the inside. It's just a lot like a pumpkin inside. And I have rubbed them down with softened butter, some salt, and then I drizzle like a teaspoon of maple syrup over the top and then I put brown sugar in there. So you can see those there. So these really kind of are, you know, really similar to like a baked, um, like if you like yams at Thanksgiving or sweet potatoes, it kind of takes on that flavor and they're just really sweet and um, are just a very nice complement to this dish. So I'm going to put those in the oven. So if you are cooking along with me today, please, I wanna just start off with saying, make sure that you have your pork chops out, that we're bringing those to room temperature. Go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees for when we bake the pork chop. Um, another thing that I wanna have you do is make sure your cream cheese is out. We want that to be a little bit softened for when we go to make our pumpkin pie mousse. Um, and then have like a trash bowl ready for you um, on the counter nearby. So that's one of the tips that I love while cooking is just to have a bowl nearby just to put that trash in. It saves me a million trips to our trash can. Ours is not, ours is on the other side of the kitchen. So, um, so anyway, so for now I'm putting my Brussels sprouts and my sweet or my acorn squash in the oven. So I'm going to go do that real quick. And both of those bake at 400 degrees. Um, and again, for like 30 to 35 minutes. All right, and I was joking around with Noah earlier that if you hear me stomping around my kitchen, I am not a pirate. I do not have a peg leg. I currently am wearing a um, soft cast boot from an ankle injury. So I apologize if it's loud and I'm stomping around. I try and walk as soft footed as possible. Okay, so I have those in the oven. Now, if you're cooking along with me, this is where you're gonna wanna start off with me. So we are going to get a soft pan, a, uh, like a, just like a soft pan, a small one. Um, and we are going to start our stuffing. So what we're gonna do is um, I am using, I love when I'm cooking this dish, they have the store stove top and they actually have a pork flavor. I don't know what the huge difference is between turkey and pork, but stove top does have, have a pork stuffing. And since we're cooking pork, that seems appropriate. So if you do not have the stove top brand, um, whichever brand you have, just look at their stove top preparation instructions and you're gonna follow those. If you have the stove top, then you're gonna do what I'm doing. <clears throat> So in this pan, I'm going to, or pot, I should say, I'm going to put a cup and a half of water, okay? And then I have four tablespoons of butter here that I'm just gonna push in, okay? And we are going to go ahead and put that on the stove top and bring it to a boil. So since we are bringing it to a boil, go ahead and put it over high heat. And then um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for that to come to a boil and then you add in the stove top and cover it and then um, remove it from the heat. So we'll get to that stop set, but make sure you have water and butter in the pot coming to a boil. So we have that going back there. And while we're waiting for that to heat up, we are gonna go ahead and season our pork chops. So you can absolutely use dried rosemary with this recipe. Um, I just really like the flavor that fresh rosemary brings in. And so I have here two sprigs of rosemary and we are going to pull that off with a stick and we're gonna chop those up. If you're using dried rosemary, just kick back and relax and uh, we'll, get, we'll catch you up in a second. So I have rosemary here. So what I do to get rosemary off the stick is kind of touch it at the tip of it and then just kind of pull back so that it's pulling against it and it comes right off. So you don't get this really tough stick in your cooking. And then we are just going to kind of chop this up. It can be pretty coarse here. Just kind of running my knife through it a few times. Make sure I don't take a finger off while I'm on live cooking. 
That would be a bummer. <laughs> All right, so we have some fresh rosemary and I can already smell that. It's so fragrant. It smells so good. All right, and then I have um, three boneless pork chops. You can absolutely cook, do this recipe with a bone in. Um, you will probably just want to cook it a little bit longer. Um, so I have three boneless pork chops and this is super simple seasoning. We're basically just going to do some salt. And at the last cooking demo, I talked about how I like to use kosher salt when cooking meat. Um, it just, it's a little bit coarser and really helps to kind of give you a nice herb crust on your meat. So I have some kosher salt and I have some coarse ground black pepper here. So I'm just gonna do a little sprinkling of that. And that's what I love about these um, pork chops is we're just gonna put, create this really nice herb crust. And then we're gonna sear them in the pan so that it really just kind of lets those flavors go into the meat there. All right, so salt and pepper. We've got some rosemary here that we just chopped up. If you have dried rosemary, go ahead and do that. I mean, this already looks good. I just like rosemary in general, just that vibrant green. And then I have some minced garlic. So um, if you are using fresh garlic, if you haven't already, make sure you peel that and chop that. Um, this is already chopped up for just for time's sake. I didn't want to be fumbling trying to peel garlic. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of garlic on there. Okay. And then I'm going to use the back of a fork here just to kind of push all those seasonings in. Kind of spread the garlic around there. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna go and flip them over with the fork there. Okay. And then same thing, we're gonna use a little bit of the kosher salt here. And salt really is gonna enhance your meat flavor from the pork there. The rest of this rosemary here. And if anyone has questions while I'm going along, Noah will definitely be um, kind of the MC here and, and letting me know that there's a question because I'm not, I don't always see those come through. So if you have a question, you're not sure how I'm doing something or you have a question about what I did, feel free to put it in the chat there and then Noah will make sure to um, let me know about that. And if there's any general cooking questions, I'll Try and address those as they go along, but we'll try and also make sure we have to save time at the end. So, all right, so we have some nice so garlic. Yeah. Garlic. yeah. Uh, speaking of that, Elise actually uh, was wondering if you have any chip tips on picking a nice uh, pork chop cut. Hmm. I just look for them. Um, you know, just kind of like you can get them like really big, really small. So just kind of like look for some that look. You want them to have a little bit of fat because that's really what kind of helps like get that meat flavor in there, keep it juicy. Um, so I look for something that's kind of light, like has a nice little layer of fat around the edge. These ones you can kind of see just have a tiny bit, um, not too fatty. You want it to be like a really nice um, pink color. Um, and also just check the date on those and make sure they're fresh. Yes. Um, yeah. So, but definitely like the coloring. I think it's like that's kind of key is looking for something that's kind of a nice rich pink color and just a little bit of fat on there. Um, I know like don't cut the fat off. You do that like after, when you're going to eat it. If you're not a fan of fat, don't take it off before you cook it. You want to cook it with that on there. Got it. Right. Okay. So our pork chops are seasoning. I hear my water boiling. So if you have your water boiling, let's go ahead and put the stove top in now. Our meat can just sit there for a second with all those flavors soaked in. So the stove top, I am going to open the box. All the seasonings and breadcrumbs are right there in it. And so we're just gonna literally add these to the pot. Just gonna stir them around so they get nice and moist. Make sure the seasonings are all well incorporated. All right, and then you're going to go ahead and turn the heat off. Put the lid on and just set it off to the side. So now our stuffing is working on getting nice and fluffy. Okay, so stuffing is on. We are good to go with that. All right, now we are going to sear our pork chops on, the, on both sides. This is just to really kind of to help enhance that meat flavor. It gives it a really nice color too. 
Um, and it helps, I think, find that it just kind of cooks all those flavors into the meat really well before we bake it. So um, go ahead and turn your skillet that you're cooking in into kind of like a medium high. I'm just gonna add a, a drizzle of olive oil around the pan. This just kind of keeps the pork chops from sticking. We'll let that heat up. Should I kind of have a clear space here? So we're gonna have a lot going on in a little bit. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these um, flat side down into the skillet. So in they go. Probably should have let it heat up a little bit longer, but I know we're short on time today. So we're just gonna get these bad boys going. All right. And like I said, the goal with putting them on the stove top isn't to necessarily cook them all the way through. Um, it's really just to um, kind of sear the flavors into the meat. We do cook them in the oven for a pretty long time. Um, so really, like I said, it's just to kind of do a nice sear on the outside. Any other questions so far? Not so far, but we got a lot of people watching. We got people on Zoom. We got 37 people on Zoom. We got oh. seven people on uh, Facebook. She's talking. All right. Good turnout. So people oh, are going to have some good meals to cook then, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Thanksgiving's going to be lit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, so with these pork chops, basically we, like I said, we sear them in a pan. You're, if the, you wanna get ready for the next step, you're gonna wanna get a baking dish. So something that we can bake in. So mine is pretty good sized here. You can see a nice deep one. If you just have like a Pyrex, that's totally fine. You just need something that your pork chops are going to fit into. And then that you can put like the apples and stuffings and there will be extra so to kind of be able to put around that. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit this with a cook a quick uh, spray of cooking spray. So it helps with the dishes at the end, helps them clean out a little bit or easier. All right, and the pork chops are starting to sizzle there. So you'll start smelling those fragrant herbs cooking in no time. <laughs> so we have a couple questions. Um, have you ever used an air fryer for this dish instead of an oven? I have not, you know, I do not have an air fryer. I've not gotten on that bandwagon yet. It's something I would love. So family, if you're watching this, I would totally try an air fryer for Christmas if anyone want to get me one. So um, <laughs> I, I haven't ever used an air fryer before. I'm sure it would turn out great though. So if anyone does try, please let me know. <laughs> yes, hit up Ed Mills for one. <laughs> oh, is he a big on the air fryer? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, also, uh, Rebecca, uh, that's um she she was asking how long do you cook the brussels sprouts and the acorn squash so both of those go at about 400 degrees and anywhere from um like 30 to 40 minutes it just kind of depends on the size of the squash if you have a huge acorn squash i recommend cutting them into quarters instead of halves mine was on the like a little bit on the smaller side um and then the brussels sprouts also is going to depend on size so mine were some pretty hefty brussels sprouts um, and so same thing, like 30 to 40 minutes, just kind of depending on size. It's good to flip them, kind of stir them around like midway through, make sure they're cooking good, so. All right, awesome. I hear my pork chop sizzling, so I'm gonna go ahead and check them. And what you want to have is like a really nice golden brown color on one side. So if you are your pork chops have started to look like that, go ahead and flip them over. Oh yeah. If you have an oven fan, I recommend um, having that on. I just was worried about cutting the audio. So yeah, go ahead and turn your oven fan on if you're cooking stuff, especially with the open skillet like that. So, so yeah, so when these do come out, um, it's super quick and easy assembly. I have made this recipe, I will say before, and didn't sear the pork chops. They absolutely work just fine. So if you are short on time, you can totally skip this and just season the pork chops and then put them straight into the baking dish. You just want to bake them for like an extra like five to ten minutes um and also the bake time is going to vary based on how thick they are so.
So if you are cooking alive with along with me today, I would love to see your photos or if you cook them later on. So if you ever make my dishes, um, if you want to take a picture, you can send it to me or you can totally post them to Instagram and tag me. I love what, seeing what people are doing and see how they're turning out. Um, I know part of cooking is also kind of exploring things and changing it up and doing it on your own. So if you ever vary from the recipes, let me know too, like how it went. I have a lot of people that are like, oh, um, you know, in this recipe, I didn't have orange juice, so I turned used apple juice instead and it turned out great. And I think it's just great for people to like go to my recipes on my website to read those comments and see how other people have, you know, done their own variations and kind of changed. And I love hearing how it went so I can, you know, always change and adapt as well on my end. Okay, so the pork chops are almost ready. Again, it's only a couple of minutes for each side and it really just, um, you know, just to kind of give it a nice sear on there. If you have really, really thick pork chops, you can kind of turn them on their sides and hit the sides as well. Um, mine aren't like a super thick pork chop, so I'm not really worried about that. Right, garlic is like a nice brown color to it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these over here just so you can kind of see what they look like. All right, so you can see they have the nice herb crust on there. Ooh, can we see those in there? So it's just got like a nice, nice golden brown. They smell so good. Okay, so now comes the fun part. We're gonna assemble these bad balls. Okay, so we have the baking dish with cooking oil. That looks so good, Rebecca. Oh my gosh. And they smell good. I wish you could smell it right now. So I am just gonna kind of space these out in the cooking dish here. Good to leave a little space between them so that that way they cook nice and evenly. Otherwise your outside ones can get a little bit overdone. Okay, so now I use um, any apple pie filling that's fine. This is just kind of what they had at the store. Um, so I look for the ones that have more fruit. I think this one says like 10% more fruit or extra fruit. Um, and that just keep, that basically kind of cuts down the amount of the gelatinous stuff that's in there, like the actual like gel gelatin. Um, so this one, you have some really nice apples in there. Ooh, sorry, I light there. And so I'm just basically going to take these and scoop it out and just put a nice scoop on top of each one. You kind of want to get it even and kind of be a flat surface. Otherwise, your stuffing just is not going to sit very well there. So this dish, like I kind of came up with this one because one of my favorite ways to have pork chop um, is with applesauce. So if you've ever had like a pork chop with applesauce, this is kind of you know, a, a special variation of that, a um, little bit sweeter, but, um, you know, it's just like that really yummy, savory flavors of like the rosemary and the garlic um, with the sweetness of the apples is really good. So I have extra in my can here. So what I do is I just kind of put that around the pan, just kind of spread out. Just kind of make sure you, each one has a nice amount on it and just kind of spread. The rest of the apples around the pan there. All right, we're done with that. It's going to go in the trash bowl. Okay, and now we have our stuffing. So I'm going to pull that off the stove top here. Stove top, off the stove top. Uh -huh. All right, so. So Rebecca, real quick, uh, for those of for those of us that might not be able to see the dish right now, could you describe it? Um, so basically I have a large baking dish here and I sprayed it with cooking spray and I have, um, put the pork chops down in there and then I placed the apple pie filling on top and the extra round it. I can kind of hold it up to this other camera. People are seeing that one. Okay. Oops. I don't want to tip oh my it. Gosh, that looks awesome. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have the pork or the stuffing here. So I'm going to, uh, oh, there's my spoon. Okay, so I'm going to, since I have a nonstick pan, I have a plastic spoon here. And I just kind of fluff up the stove top here. So it's kind of nice and fluffy. Is anyone able to see the food dish? Ooh, there we go, there's the stuffing there. Oh, actually, sorry, before you do that, I like to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top. So if you like the flavor of apples and cinnamon, um, I go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top of the apples. There we go. Kind of gives it that nice fall flavor of cinnamon and spice. 
All right, and then I just take a spoon of the stuffing and just kind of put that on top of each one here. And it's okay if some of it falls off because again, with, just like we did with the apples, we're gonna take a little bit extra and sprinkle them around. Okay. All right, and then yeah, take the extra stuffing, just kind of put it around the pork chops there. I know you might be tempted to eat it as it is, but don't. <laughs> we have some undercooked pork chops. Okay. So since, is the camera working now for people? Like, can you see that there? Or do you want me to try and hold it up to this camera? Let's see, so we have the pork chops, apples, cinnamon, and then the stuffing. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually cover this in foil like this. Gonna help have it cook nice and evenly. So it's wrapped in foil, and we're gonna stick that in the oven that should be preheated to 350 by now. And we are going to head, go ahead and cook that for 20 to 25 minutes. So 20 if they're on the smaller end of things. Um, and then what we'll do after that time is up is we'll remove the foil and we'll cook it another 10 minutes. And then that just gives the stuffing a really nice kind of crunchiness on the outside. Okay, work in the oven. So while well, that's baking, now we're on to like my favorite part of every meal, which is dessert, right? Um, so for this one, um, first thing we're gonna wanna do is make our um, crusts for our stuff. So with this recipe, so this is pumpkin pie mousse. I kind of like to treat them as an individual cup. So um, if you are, you know, you can put these in, like if you're traveling to someone's house and you're bringing these as dessert, mason jars work great because you can put the lid on, they travel easy. If you're serving them on your home, if you have some cute little dessert cups or, um, you know, for what I'm doing today is I'm actually gonna put them in some stemless wine glasses. So they, you know, something clear so you can see the layers. All right, let me get all my dessert ingredients. Oop. There we go. All right, so I have all my stuff laid out on a nice sheet here, ready to go. And what we're going to do is we are going to, um, let's see, only the screensaver. Oh, wonder. Hey, don't, don't worry about it, uh, Rebecca. We're, uh, we're, uh, we're troubleshooting right now. Describing everything. Okay, so with this, we're going to make the, cr the crust first. And it's basically, it's just going to be a graham cracker crust, something you would do for, um, there, all right, there she is. All right, people are seeing it. All right, so these are the ingredients I have prepared here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and melt our butter. So I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave. It's four tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt this in the microwave. Probably like 20 seconds is adequate. Sorry, the oven going, the microwave's mad. <laughs> okay, so I have the butter's melting. We're gonna put into a bowl here, which I'll do a little switcheroo so you can actually see the bowl. All right, so we have a small mixing bowl. And in that, we're gonna put one and a half cups of graham cracker crumbs. So these ones, you can buy regular graham crackers and crush them yourself, or you they do sell boxes of graham cracker crumbs ready to go at the store. So this is one and a half cup graham cracker crumbs. And I'm gonna put in a half cup of granulated sugar. So that goes in. My butter is melted. All right, so this is um, four tablespoons of melted butter. So that is half of a stick of butter. And we're just gonna kind of pour that in. Okay. And we're gonna take a large mixing spoon. And we're just going to kind of stir that up. It's nicely incorporated. And this really just the butter essentially is just kind of allowing um, the graham crackers to kind of bond together. So you can kind of create like a little bit of a crust in there. You see, I'm just mixing it anywhere there, there's big clumps. I'm just kind of breaking those apart. All right, nicely incorporated. 
And if you really like cinnamon, you can always add in a little bit of extra cinnamon too. Kind of gives that flavor, but we do put pumpkin spice in the pumpkin filling, so you get plenty of flavor from those. All right, and then, like I said, so um, you can put these in whatever dishes you have around your house. For me, I'm using some stemless wine glasses. Um, oh, you can't see that one. There we go. So these are just clear glasses. I like I said, I like the clear glass component. Um, because it allows you to see all the layers in there. Okay, so we're just going to set those there. And I'm just going to kind of put a nice size scoop, actually. It's easier just to have one there. So you can see one nice and centered. <laughs> so I'm going to put a couple of the heaping scoops of the graham cracker crumbs. Oh, and for the number of dishes, you're going to want to do probably like six to eight. It's going to kind of depend on the size of glasses you have. So like I said, when I did this last time, I did it in mason jars. So like this little, um, I think it's like a half pint, works great. Um, and like I said, it's awesome because you can put the lids on, they travel great. If you're serving them in your home, then you don't really um, need that. So just kind of whatever amount you want in there, it's probably like, probably like a quarter cup, I'd say is probably in there. I'm just kind of doing two generous scoops. And if you um, are doing, you know, a larger amount, um, just make sure you save about a quarter cup of the crumbs at the end to go as a garnish on top. So I really like to do a little bit of the graham cracker crumbs just on the top for a nice little finish on the whipped cream. You guys are going to love these. So um, one of the things I think is really great about this recipe is that it's really light and fluffy mousse. It's not like a really dense pumpkin pie flavor. Um, or, you know, has the pumpkin fly flavor, but it's not like a really dense pie. It's really light and fluffy like a mousse. Um, and then so what I'm doing is I have like a little muddler here and I just kind of am lightly packing it down. You don't want to be in there too much because when they are refrigerated, um, the, it can make the crust like really hard to cut because the butter is gonna burn up. So I'm just kind of patting it down. Let's see, whoop, there you can see. So there's just a nice little layer in the bottom. You can totally leave it loose too. I just kind of do just a little bit, just pat them down a little bit. And this, I, you can use the back of a spoon. I'm just using a cocktail muddler. Works great for giving you just like a nice flat edge there. All right, so now we're gonna make all the yummy goodness that goes inside those. So I'm going to set these aside. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is basically make whipped cream. So I, nothing beats like homemade whipped cream. I love the texture of it. I love just, um, it doesn't feel like all oily. So we're gonna do a handmade um, homemade whipped cream. If you are short on time and you need to rush, you can absolutely get a container of Cool Whip. So for the homemade whipped cream, we're going to take a pint of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna pour that in the bowl. And we have a teaspoon of vanilla. That goes in there. And then we have a half cup of powdered sugar. So this is just um, confectioner's powdered sugar. So we're just gonna put that in there. Right. And then you can absolutely use a stand mixer or a hand mixer. I am using a hand mixer today because um, the stand mixer is just a little bit bigger and bulkier and it's harder to show you inside. So we literally are just going to beat this on medium high heat. Or no, medium high speed, not heat. You want it cold. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna do this until it gets nice and thick and fluffy. trick that I learned that is awesome is that um, when you're doing this, um, if you do it in your kitchen sink, it really helps, you know, to give the splatter somewhere to go. Obviously doing it like in the bowl like this, if it's not a very deep bowl, it can splash around. So if you do it in your kitchen sink, I found that you would be amazed how much the edges of the kitchen sink can catch. I got a KitchenAid a couple years ago and um, it 
it's really hard to go back to a hand mixer after we've had a kitchen egg because I literally will put all the ingredients for whipped cream in there and then we'll just like walk away <laughs> and come back like a couple minutes later and the whipped cream's done. You can see it's already starting to thicken up there. So this is just a really awesome like general like whipped cream recipe so it's always like a pint of heavy whipping cream a quarter cup of powdered sugar Hey, Rebecca, if you have just a second, um, we accidentally, um, through all our control systems, we might have accidentally unmuted you. Um, would you be able to uh, uh, manually unmute yourself? Sorry, I know you're in the middle of like three different things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, are we good? And we're back. All right. <laughs> All right, so our whipped cream is looking pretty good there. It's a little thick. I'm gonna go with just one more minute here. So not in the minute. Okay, look at that nice, rich whipped cream. Okay, cool. We're good to go with our whipped cream. You can see it's nice and thick there. And we are just going to set that bowl aside. And we're gonna go ahead and start our pumpkin filling now. Okay, so you're gonna get another mixing bowl out. Okay, this one's pretty big, so sorry, you're gonna be like right in the bottom of with the screen there. And we are going to put in there a block of cream cheese. So this is just a block of Philadelphia cream cheese, just one block, that's all you need. We're just gonna push that right in there. Hopefully you took it out earlier on so it's kind of come to room temperature, it's a little bit softer, easier to work with. And then we have a half cup this is granulated sugar. And I have one cup of pumpkin puree. So this is just the canned stuff at the store, like the pumpkin pie filling, the puree. Whoop, you can see that there. Um, so obviously any brand is totally acceptable, um, but you don't end up using the whole can of this. So we're only gonna need one cup. So I'm just gonna kind of put that in there. And it reminds me of baby food, but don't worry. It tastes nothing like baby food. <laughs> okay. Right. And then we have one teaspoon of pumpkin. Oh, sorry. It's hard to see there. Whoop, there you go. So this is a teaspoon and this is pumpkin pie spice. Um, so just buy the small container because you don't need that much. Um, but just any pumpkin pie spice that has all sorts of great fall flavor there. And we're just going to add that in. Okay. So that is it for the ingredients. So again, that was um, half a cup of sugar, a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, one cup of pumpkin puree, and a block of cream cheese. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna beat that um, until it, it's like all well incorporated, the cream cheese and gets all the lumps out. So this one, I don't think with the tall bowl, I'm gonna be able to keep it under the camera. So let's move it off to the side there. I think the key ingredient here is cream cheese. It's the best ingredient.
All right, that looks pretty darn good. So you can see it's nice and creamy now. Um, we got the bulk of those um, cream cheese chunks out. If there's still a few in there, don't even worry about it. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we have our delicious whipped cream we made and we're gonna add about a cup of the whipped cream into the pumpkin mousse. So let's see here. So I'm just gonna take like a nice scoop here, which is about a cup of whipped cream, maybe a little bit extra. And this is what makes it really light and fluffy. So I'm just going to kind of incorporate the whipped cream in there. This part, you can use the mixer if you want. I find just folding it in works just great. And this stuff is amazing. If you're cooking it at home, go ahead, stick your finger in there and taste it. It is so good. Another thing that's great about this versus a regular pumpkin pie is it's no bake. So, I mean, Thanksgiving, you already have, you know, your oven fired up, going, cooking a million other things. The last thing you want to deal with is one more thing to cook. Okay, so now what we're going to do, you're going to go ahead and get your containers that had the um, graham cracker crumbs. And this is the fun part. I need another spoon. If you have tall, skinny containers, um, you can always use a piping bag too. That works great. But basically, we're just going to go ahead and put some dollops. Can you see those on the here? Yeah. Kind of centered there, huh? Yeah, so just some nice dollops of the pumpkin mousse in there. Try and do one at a time there so you can kind of see there. So you're just evenly distributing this among all your cups. You mentioned a piping bag. What exactly is that? Is that what you like use to like top cakes and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So basically it allows you to kind of get in there and you know, it's like you have to take the time to put it in a bag. Sometimes I'll just even use a Ziploc bag, but it allows you just to kind of get it down in there so that it like keeps it off the edge and kind of just get it directly into the bottom of the cup. Ah, oh, yes, the presentation. Yes. <laughs> you could be doing a pretty dang good job, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm actually, because these glasses are a little bit bigger, it looks like I'm just going to go ahead and do five. All right. So, yeah, you just want to kind of make sure that it's evenly distributed among all of those. Sorry, I realize that you guys can't see this. Yeah, so I ended up, because my glasses are a little bit bigger, I'm just doing five of them here. These are going to be very generous portion dessert. But it's okay, because when I, even when I have one of them and they're smaller, I've never seen them, so I could always go for more. <laughs> All right, just kind of like make sure that they're evenly kind of down there, kind of evenly spread out in the glass there. This one got a little bit messy. Okay. Then what we're going to do is layer the whipped cream on top. So whipped cream always goes on top of dessert, right? Okay. So the same thing. We're just going to put a nice little dollop of it in there. Yeah. So if you were using like, like a piping bag, it's going to look, look just, you know, it's a little, little it look to it. My glasses weren't the best choice, I guess. Last time I did the mason jars, it's a little bit easier to get it in there with not having the smaller opening. It's all right, though, because it all tastes good. So, And we're fancy now, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do one that looks kind of pretty here. Just went all over the edge there. All right, the so same thing with the pumpkin. I'm just gonna go ahead and push it in there. You made a mess around the edge of it like I did. You can use a paper towel. Or your finger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just kind of wipe around the edge here. 
And then you should have had some of those graham, extra the graham cracker crumbs set aside. And we are just going to sprinkle a little bit of that on top. Oh, let's see here. So we're finishing. There we go. All right, so I can finish the rest of those later, but at least give you guys a little peek. I totally made a mess of these ones. <laughs> Still looks good. Yeah. Okay, so you can see, whoop, try and hold it up to the bigger camera so you can see the side view. You have this lovely layered crust, mm. pumpkin mousse with cream, graham crackers on top. Um, like I said, if you use like a piping bag and get in there a little bit better, keep the edges cleaner, definitely a better presentation. Um, sorry about being short on time with doing that. So. Um, do I deliver? No, but if you want to come by, I will happily set one outside. You can, um, it's cool enough. It'll keep it fresh out there. So, <laughs> okay. So yeah, so pumpkin pie mousse, light and fluffy. It has all those great fall flavors. Um, we found just like a lot of other foods that if you keep them in the fridge, like if you make them at the day ahead, um, the flavors seem to definitely get better. So um, love these. I mean, the great thing is if you're having hosting Thanksgiving or hosting a fall party, um, which you shouldn't be doing now because of COVID, but if next year, hopefully when things are better, um, you can make these ahead of time and have them in the fridge ready to go. So it's one less thing you're dealing with doing on the day of the event or the day of Thanksgiving. So our pork chops are probably pretty, pretty close to done. So we're gonna go ahead and set those aside for later. And let me just clean up my workspace here. All right, nice clean workspace. Okay, so now it is time to check our pork chop. So your pork chop, you want it to be cooked in an internal temperature of 145 degrees. Um, oh, actually, we didn't take the, the foil off. Oops, sorry, I'm like way ahead of myself. So we're gonna go ahead and take the foil off our pork chop. And we're just gonna let it keep baking. Almost get that set. So I like to cook it uncovered just for a few minutes. Um, because that allows, like I said, the stuffing to get a little bit crispy. Um, if you don't like it crispy, you can cook it the whole 30 minutes with it on top. If you do like your stuffing a little bit crispy, then like I said, you cook it covered for 20 minutes, take the foil off and just let it kind of crisp up under there. Um, so that's going, I'm going to check my Brussels sprouts and acorn squash. All right. So those look awesome. So we're just going to let those, I turned the oven off just to keep it warm. Um, I have two ovens, so that's why I have pork chops still cooking in one. Are there any questions at all right now while we wait for our pork chops to just kind of finish off? So Free Fresh Sherry uh, was asking um, where, she'll, where she can find like the step-by-step -step recipes. Um, oh, is it great. on the website or um, I know we have the ingredients on the flyer, but Yes, yeah, so the pork chop is on my blog. That's like I said, it's been one I've been making for a really long time. So if you search like pork chop and stuffing, it comes up. I recently have been calling it like apple pie pork chop because it's a lot quicker than pork chop with apples and stuffing. Um, but yes, that is on my blog. Um, the baked acorn squash is also on my blog. So you can search that there. And then um, the pumpkin pie mousse, I have it ready to go up. It'll be posted tomorrow. So that one will go up. So it's DivaDiCucina.com. Awesome. Yeah, we got that up on the chat. Um, also, KCED, um, she, I have never tried acorn squash. Is it comparable to any other squash? Um, it's, I'd say, kind of similar to like a butternut squash. Like, if you're a fan of that, it's kind of just like, um, you know, a pretty mild flavor. I love just baking it with like the salt, butter, and maple syrup, but I have another recipe that's super awesome, um, and it's a stuffed acorn squash with uh, ground turkey. So you make this really yummy filling of ground turkey, and I think it's got some greens in there and some seasonings, and you cook those in a pan, and then you put it into the acorn squash and bake it. So if you are a fan of ground turkey, the ground turkey with acorn squash is another awesome fall dish, like nice and low calorie. Um, and that's also on the blog. So there's so many great uses for it. Um, I kind of had a funny story on acorn squash. So 
I used to, when I first started blogging, I had an organic produce company reach out to me and ask if I would start, if I would like um, start writing recipes for some of their items in exchange for free organic produce. And I was like, absolutely. So it was awesome. And they would show up every Monday, I would get a box of produce delivered. And one time there was an acorn squash in there. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I literally thought my whole life thought acorn squash were a decoration. I did not know you actually cook and eat them. So it was kind of like when I got it, I had to do some research. I was like, okay, what do you do with this? And now you see acorn squash everywhere. Like lots of restaurants cook it, um, they'll slice it. Um, so yeah, so acorn squash is delicious, a really good fall squash, and they last for months on the counter. That's the other thing too, is that if you see them on sale, buy them. Um, they literally will last for months and they just, they look pretty too. I, I love the look of an acorn squash. Actually, I have one sitting here, I can show you a whole one. So this one is a very large acorn squash. But so yeah, I always thought this was just like one of those decorative gourds. So when I am cooking them, I basically cut the top off here so it make a flat edge and then I cut this pointy tip off so it's a flat edge. And then that way the cross cut that you see has these beautiful kind of little like um, rounded edges that are just gorgeous. I think they look really pretty. It's like it makes for a nice presentation. So this big one here is definitely one that I would quarter instead of half. Um, and if you do a baked acorn squash, one of my tips is to put a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan. So before I baked mine, I just, I had like a quarter cup in there and that really keeps the squash from drying out. It keeps the moisture in there, um, keeps it from sticking to your pan. So that's kind of like your acorn squash tip of the day um, when you're preparing them. That's hilarious. I didn't even know what I've seen an acorn squash, but I didn't even know that's what it was. Like in my head, it was to something totally different. <laughs> yeah, really it's pointed good. like an acorn, but um, yeah, they're really good, really great flavor. And like I said, I love seasonal produce. That's when you're going to find acorn squash is the cheapest is during the fall because it is a, you know, produce, a seasonal item. Um, Totally. At your local farmer's market. Yes. Yes, they are not decorative. Oh, and the other tip too is that um, when I had first posted the recipe, I had one of my followers reach out to me. She had made it for her family. She said, are we supposed to eat the skin? And I said, no, you don't eat the skin. So that's one tip is do not eat the skin off the acorn squash. Um, when I prepare them, when you see when they come out of the oven, um, we just kind of scoop it out with a spoon while like, so I plate them with the skin on and then you just kind of like, it's like a bowl and it keeps like all the... Um, the syrup and the sugar and butter um, actually kind of in there soaking into the, the meat of the squash. How do you tell when you've, you've gotten past the meat and into the skin, you know, when you're, when you're scooping it out, is it, is it pretty, you can tell, right? Yeah. The, the skin is definitely tough. Like it's a pretty rigid skin. So I felt so bad for this person. I was like, Oh, I guess I should clarify like on the blog, like don't eat the skin. Cause yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you're not going to be a very big fan of acorn squash if you eat the skin while you're crunching it. through it. <laughs> it's so tough. Why would you eat this? <laughs> I broke a tooth. Yeah. Um, so we have a general question right now. Uh, what is your favorite holiday food? That is from um, an anonymous uh, question, actually. Favorite holiday food, it's so hard to say. Um, so I'm gonna, everyone always is like, oh, the stuffing, the gravy, the mashed potato, and I'm gonna go non-traditional. Um, so my husband's family is Italian, and um, this was a total shock to me when I came into their family. I've been with my husband for 25 years. So the first time I had Thanksgiving with them, um, I was what, like 15 years old and they're Italian. And so Thanksgiving to them was a beef tenderloin and homemade ravioli. So that has kind of become the tradition um, every once in a while is that instead of doing turkey and all the traditional fixings is homemade ravioli. So his grandmother would make these raviolis by hand, roll out the dough, make the filling. Um, and so like, I love it when we all get together and we have like this non-traditional Thanksgiving of, um, you know, prime rib and homemade raviolis. So just nothing beats homemade raviolis, especially when grandma makes them. So that's probably my favorite thing. Like, and a lot of times if we have turkey for Thanksgiving, we'll do the raviolis for Christmas. So during the fall, we'll get together and we'll make um, a huge batch of homemade raviolis and stuff. Oh my gosh, you had me at homemade raviolis. Yes, oh. yeah. It's just, it's hard to even eat frozen ones after you've had that, so. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. Also from Ed Mills, again, we have, um, hey, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> referring to cooking pork chops, um, does adding the apples and stuffing change the cooking time? 
No, so um, that's why we like when we seared them in the oven, um, you know, we gave it that nice like herb crust on there and then that kind of part cooked outside. So really we're just kind of finishing them in the oven. Um, so I would say no, if you, don't, if you are skipping the apples and the stuffing and you're just baking them, um, I would still probably do it like 20 to 25 minutes. Um, you're not gonna need the foil cover. Like I would cook them just like uncovered um, if you aren't doing all those other things on top. Awesome. Yeah. So cool. All that yeah, so I think it's close. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the pork chops out of the oven and we're gonna go ahead and plate. I know we're getting down to the wire here. So we're gonna go ahead and plate this tasty feast. All right. Oh, acorn squash is holding down my oven mitt. <laughs> Actually, I'll put this here so you guys can see it finish off. So sometimes the apples will kind of slide around. So the pork chops are kind of lost under there. We have this nice, um, the stuffing is kind of like a nice crispy exterior. We have cook there. It smells so amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this now that you've seen it so you can kind of see the final plating. Move that out of the way. Get a plate here. I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be a little tedious because like I said, the apples get a little slippery and can kind of cause things to slide around. So I'm going to go ahead and use a spatula. You thought this one looks lovely. All right, there we go. I'm just going to push it off there. So we have the chop on the bottom, the stuffing, the apples. And like I said at the beginning, we took some of the extra apples and stuffing and kind of sprinkled on the outside. So I'm just going to go ahead and add like a nice little pile of that to the side. I'm going to get my egg from the out and then that out. Okay. And the egg force wash, just be careful if you make this right. The maple syrup is sure in the bottom. You get very hot, so you can the butter, um, maple syrup, and um, uh, brown sugar. So I can get really hot with the sugar in there. You definitely bring it, so be careful with that. And then we need some color on this plate. So we're going to get some Brussels sprouts. And like I said, if you missed at the beginning, this recipe goes amazing with um, beans and mashed potatoes. There we go. These Brussels sprouts look awesome. So you can kind of see um, we did the cook size down, so they have that nice round outside. Nice exterior. The next tip I like to do is um, add a little sprig of rosemary. I guess our pork chop kind of, all this stuff and kind of slid off here. Push that back up there. And just add a little sprig of rosemary right to the top. So you can see that you have a beautiful plate of, see if I can get it center for you, some green Brussels sprouts, stuffing, apples. You got your pork chop under there. And then you have um, a little sprig of the rosemary on top. So you can kind of we'll go to the, so you can kind of see the side view of it there. You can see the pork chop, sorry, apples and stuffing. Usually I'll try and let this sit and for a couple minutes before I serve it up. That way the apples kind of, Go into place. So you have this beautiful fall. Um, just the pork chop dinner itself. If you have like all the olive oil stuff on hand, you're really just buying the apples, the stuffing, and the pork chops. Those are probably make it for dollars. So this is a dinner that is a really nice fall feast, um, super affordable. Um, if you're having a small gathering for Thanksgiving, it's awesome because you don't have to cook an entire turkey. You don't have to spend a lot of it in the kitchen. We made dinner and dessert in less than an hour. So um, yeah, so super quick and easy. No questions on anything in general or about this dish? Checking it out. We have a great job. Another one from Ed Mills. Thank you. <laughs> um, I love it. Dinner and a dessert in less than an hour. <laughs> <laughs> DVD Kachina, everyone. Thank oh, you so sure, much. Sure. One more time. Yes. All right. There you go. That's what I think I'm going to be having for lunch today. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, the, the pork chop's great because I always say it's like having a pork chop and apple pie with your dinner meal. So. <laughs> oh, you, you pair the sweet with the savory and, and everything in between. Uh, yeah, no, all the flavors in there. You have the rose, we have like these really bold savory flavors and then some really nice, you know, the, the fall flavor, the apples, the cinnamon, the rosemary. It's definitely a, a really nice uh, balanced meal. Just make sure you get some veggies in there too. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Bro, yeah, sugar, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, I can, let's see if, if I mess it up, if I go on. So thank you so much. Beth. This was awesome. Like I learned so much just within this like minute of just us being, you know, here. Um, uh, a little bit for everyone, you know, stress. Um, so tomorrow we have um, our very first. So you know, you kind of missed out this time. But if you if you uh, stay with us, um, you can be on uh, early for next, um, next week. Obviously, we're right. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Um, but we'll be back on December second with Mr. Hooper. That's Mr. Hooper. That will be sex seminal, uh, if not hip hop extraordinaire. He will make it live over at Remedy Review for us. And so uh, two Thursdays from now, that will be December third. Will be our very very first Texas State's Got Talent virtual. So um, we're getting a lot of talent from uh, states, um, students and faculty, and it's a good time right now. Um, thank you so much for this 
masterclass. You know, uh, we got we got the mates, we got apples and pork chops, and uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, my mom, my mom was over here like just like scribbling down the other directions. And stuff. We're we're really psyched. Um, if you, oh, sorry. I keep making that question, but I try to be very active on social media. You can always feel free to ask me questions. Um, your message may help out. Have questions, so definitely feel free. I'm here. I mean, it's a you know like we're already just entering together. So yes. also, this will be uh, recorded on um, what is it? Uh, so if you wanna you know come back to uh, to recap and everything, um, don't have any questions. You can start on uh, DVD.